I'm joined now by Congressman Jerry Nadler, Chairman of the Judiciary Committee. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, first, your reaction to the release of Paul Manafort from prison? Well, it, it's highly suspicious. It's, it seems to be another step in the politicization of the Justice Department where the president's friends, uh, people the president supports, are treated one way and everybody else is treated the other way. Uh, just another example, uh, like the uh, uh, outrageous decision to drop the prosecution of Michael Flynn after he stood up in court and swore under oath that he was, in fact, guilty. Uh, this is unprecedented. And uh, we have a real problem with the uh, Justice Department being subverted and politicized to be the personal agent of the president instead of the Department of Justice of the United States. We reported the history of Bill Barr uh, and this committee you run. Uh, are there any plans to have Mr. Barr come back in to address all of this? Well, yes. Um, he was. Uh, he had agreed to come in and testify before the committee on March 31st, as you pointed out, and that was put off. Uh, we've been uh, in communication with them. And now that uh, the District of Columbia has uh, extended the stay-at-home order till June 8th, we are saying that we expect to see Barr in front of our committee on June 9th, the very next day. Um, well, that's new. Is that something that uh, you have reason to believe he will agree to? Well, he hasn't agreed to it yet, um, but we will do what we have to do, uh, whether that's a subpoena or whether that's the deciding the Department of Justice doesn't really need all the appropriations it's getting, or the Office of the Attorney General doesn't need its appropriations. Uh, we cannot have a situation where the Attorney General uh, just thumbs his nose and, and, and the administration holds uh, Congress in contempt. Very interesting. So your view is, as a practical matter, Washington formally reopens there June 8th, and you're demanding Barr come back on this effectively overdue uh, hearing on June 9th, and if he doesn't, you're prepared to use the power of the purse or subpoena to make it happen. We're prepared to do whatever we have to do. We will consider all those methods. Understood. Uh, let me remind viewers, you know the issues well, of course, uh, what happens when you keep score of some of the more serious convictions from the Mueller probe? Uh, I want to put up on the screen some of the top convicted Trump advisors. Uh, Manafort, as mentioned, was incarcerated. Now he's effectively released on home confinement or called home quarantine. Uh, Mike Flynn had pled guilty, and now uh, there's an effort to have him drop the case. Interestingly, Michael Cohen um, was initially supposed to get uh, home confinement. His prison reportedly had much more of a coronavirus outbreak than Manafort's, where it was zero, and that has been basically interfered with at this point. He remains incarcerated. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you view this as an active set of steps to use uh, the Justice Department and the Bureau of Prisons to reward people who were effectively loyal to Trump uh, and also to punish those who were not? Clearly, that is clearly the case, and you see this in uh, in exactly what you just pointed out about the Manafort on the one hand, Cohen on the other hand, uh, Flynn, the attempt to uh, uh, to reduce the sentence of Roger Stone, uh, step after step after step to make the Justice Department uh, not a Department of Justice uh, of the United States, but simply uh, a handmaiden of the president, and you, and the president says so. The president comes out and says we're going to. A look at the crimes committed by the investigators. We're going to investigate other things. Um, uh, that's why we have to have Barr in front of us on the 9th uh, to get to the bottom uh, that, that, that they are subverting the Department of Justice into a personal uh, um, agent uh, of the president and subverting justice. Uh, and that's uh, completely contrary uh, to the interest of justice in the United States. We cannot have a Department of Justice uh, that is not impartial and that serves the personal interests of the president and not the interests of justice. Will you seek to hear from any of these prosecutors as well? We're in discussion with a number of, um, of individuals, and uh, that may very well happen. What do you say to people who watched the uh, impeachment probe uh, where you were a House manager? Uh, watch the claims made there, and we've reported those claims uh, by some of the very same lawyers made in the Supreme Court this week. Um, an out-in-the-open, out-loud argument 
um, that laws do not apply to the president, the constitutional and congressional oversight doesn't apply. Uh, you add them all together, it can sound sometimes like the sitting president has people saying that he is above the law, and thus we're not really in a lawful democracy anymore. But there are people, and I'm sure you know the chairman, who say, well, maybe they're just getting away with it all. Uh, what is your response to that larger concern? Well, that is a very, very large concern for all of us. Uh, this president and Attorney General Barr actively aiding him is, is making the arguments that the president is above the law. He cannot be prosecuted criminally. They argued in court the other day that, that he cannot be uh, even investigated in a, in a, in a criminal uh, suit uh, dealing with something that has nothing to do with his being president. Uh, they're arguing that the president is above the law and that he's subject to no restrictions. Um, this is exactly what the, the framers went against. Um, they didn't want George III. They wanted a president, not a king. He is arguing he's a president, and Attorney General Barr is trying to make sure that he is a king, not a, not a, not a president. And this is intolerable to democracy in this country. Uh, and finally, sir, let me play for you uh, Mr. Barr in his own words. You made some news just now saying uh, the lengths you're going to go to make sure he testifies June 9th, the day uh, D.C.'s back fully open. Here he was both during the Mueller probe and recently. Take a listen. If Bill Barr was your first attorney general, would there have been a Mueller probe and a Russia hoax? No, uh, there wouldn't be. Uh, he would have stopped it immediately. The president was frustrated and angered by his sincere belief that the investigation was undermining his presidency. I think the president did the right thing in removing uh, Atkinson. I think the president has every right to be frustrated because I think what happened to him was one of the greatest travesties in American history. What is your response to Mr. Barr's defense that the president's personal or emotional feelings about something can justify actions which uh, you and your committee have identified as potentially unconstitutional? Well, the president's emotional responses cannot justify illegal or unconstitutional acts, obviously, if we are, if we are a nation of laws. Um, and here you have a perfect illustration. Um, the president, on the one hand, uh, and, and Attorney General Barr, on the one hand, are making sure that the president's friends, uh, Roger Stone, gets a lot, tries to get a lesser sentence. Flynn doesn't get prosecuted, even though he pleaded guilty, um, on the one hand. But anyone who is honest, like, the, like Atkinson, the inspector general, who simply did his job mandated by law, uh, he is punished. He's fired. Um, the people who were witnesses in the impeachment hearings, uh, 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 Vindman and Sondland, even Vindman's brother, other people, they were all fired. Um, and, uh, and, and, and someone who uh, testified against the president, like Roy, like, uh, Cohen, like uh, 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 Michael Cohen, Cohen gets, uh, Cohen, uh, what's it? Uh, yeah, Roy Cohen, uh, he, he's, still, he's still in jail. And the president you're, is yeah, you're referring to Michael Cohen uh, in jail, although and, Roy Cohen was it, the president's it, former it, lawyer, it, so. <laughs> We're on yeah, a slight but, delay. But I was just saying, Chairman, it's a understandable right. overlap. Go ahead, sir. I said he committed the unpardonable sin of telling the truth afterwards, uh, the truth that wasn't convenient to the president. So you have a pattern here of the Department of Justice under Barr being used to punish the president's uh, enemies or just honest people who testify about things and to uh, try to protect uh, anyone who defends the president or is the president's friends, and in an, an unprecedented ways. We have never seen a situation before where someone who has pleaded guilty, who stood up in a court of law before a judge and swore under oath that he was, in fact, guilty, where they then try to drop the charges. Now, this is unheard of. Um, it is, it's an outrageous miscarriage of justice, and it's, an, it's, a, it's a subversion of the rule of law, and that we cannot have in this country. Understood and uh, interesting the news you made tonight and we will be watching obviously leading up um, to what happens with Mr. Barr and your committee. I appreciate you coming on. I hope you come back. Chairman Nadler.